Hey, hey, it's Dr. J, and guess what? Today is a very special day because, as you know, I go around the world and so forth and find people that are doing things differently, but also making a big difference to businesses. Whether it's in the health and fitness industry, whether it's in dentistry, it doesn't matter. It does. It just has to be something that's different that actually reduces costs, makes money, and and makes life a little bit easy for you. And look. Uh, I've been introduced to David Hayes, and he's the CEO of G's Plus, and this is called a mobile concierge. Now, how good is this? What it does, it actually does a whole lot of things that cost you a stack of money already, and it does it more efficiently. It actually pinpoints so many things in customer service that I, um, I didn't even know existed as some of the problems. So I'm going to be having a great chat with, uh, with David today. So welcome, David. Uh, thanks for joining me. Steve, thank you for the opportunity. I'm looking forward to having a chat and telling you all about uh, how we can fix the world's customer service. <laughs> well, customer service is such a, a, a broad brush thing, isn't it? Now, um, I try to pinpoint customer service where it actually can have a measurable component. Everyone who knows me is all about measurements and so forth. So um, would I be safe to say that uh, customer service would could be in customer service in a, a, an initial contact with sales, um, maybe after a sales service and uh, maybe just general um, a service with questions after the people have bought products and so forth. Would that be would that be right? Look, customer thanks. David. Customer service is all about customer engagement. Whether it's at the first first stage, second stage, third stage, fourth stage, the reality of the situation is that it gives the opportunity for the corporation to know the customer. If you know the customer, you can sell to the customer and you can provide that long-term relationship. And what we are trying to build in people's mindsets is the whole business of conversational marketing. We believe that there is an opportunity to move the goalpost on customer service by having conversational marketing in a cost-effective and efficient manner, as well as being multilingual. And so when you say conversation, and this is a, a big rock, conversations are, is the lifeblood of business. We can't actually, we, look, we can certainly have uh, links that people just buy things, which are low ticket items, but everyone wants to have a conversation and you can't make a sale without a conversation. You can't fix a problem without a conversation and just sending it uh, um, uh, uh, with a, uh, just a, a PDF to say, here's some frequently asked questions, this doesn't work. But... But there's a significant cost in actually having people um, answering the telephones and uh, being able to even get someone on the telephone these days. You got your one, twos, and threes, and you know, put, and then you get sort of shifted across to different departments, and it goes to the wrong place. Now, you created G's Plus, the mobile concierge, because of a, six, a number of problems you were seeing out in the marketplace. So. Just let's pinpoint one or two of the big problems you've been seeing in the marketplace where it, it, it refers to customer care or customer service. Thanks, Dave. Look, I, I think the key to understand why we got into this business is that the problem I saw was voice-to-voice -voice customer service was frankly just not efficient. When you have a situation, and Forrester did the research saying that a standard voice-to-voice -voice customer service uh, engagement was about $4.80 per call. When we suggested to a corporation that using messaging for customer service, and what I mean by messaging, Steve, is not only SMS, but Facebook Messenger, Google Business Messenger, and web chat, those are standard messaging you know, uh, channels in, in the marketplace now. So Forrester showed that $4 as against 60 cents for a messaging customer service engagement. That's a massive saving for a company. But now, absolutely. You, when... if, you, if you look at SMS and look, let's put it in perspective. How many times do we phone somebody and it goes to their voicemail? Most of the time, we actually have to create a model called matrixing to uh, get hold of that person uh, very quickly or within that five days. Now, the statistics say that if you do not get hold of the person 
on the telephone or the Zoom, within one minute, you're going to have to dial seven to 11 times. Now, that is a significant cost, not just in leaving voicemail messages with the, you know, uh, the cost of the call, because a lot of calls are free these days, but it's the time of the person uh, making those calls. So at $4 versus 60 cents, that's incredible. So I, I, I believe that um, most businesses are trying, and the word is trying, um, to streamline their businesses because everyone reads an SMS. I mean, I don't know about you, but I get an SMS and I want to know who's in that. Who is it? Oh, it's a little present, isn't it? Or everyone talks on Messenger these days and, and uh, you know, all these apps like WhatsApp and everyone says, oh, are you on WhatsApp or you're, are you on Messenger? And I get all these different types of communication and it's not by telephone. It's actually by Messenger. So Messenger is the new way of communicating. Would you agree? Absolutely, so. Look, you know, there is a there's a very very interesting uh, Gartner report came out today that says that a lot of companies um, are moving their customer service to messaging, and companies that have recently or over the last few years invested in very very expensive applications, but these applications people are finding it difficult and awkward and. To, to load on their phones and their real estate is getting completely overtaken by these applications. So Gartner in this research indicated that people are going back to good old fashioned SMS messaging, okay? Or Facebook messaging or Google business uh, messaging. Those three channels. Now, if you take SMS, it is ubiquitous on all telephones globally. And there is billions of messages sent every day. Now, that's the conversational channel that you and I use when we converse with our friends and our family. It's also the channel that people feel trusted with. Now, the statistics are very simple. Most, uh, well, 98% of messages are read within the first three minutes. So let's take a, a typical customer journey. You can have a situation where you say, a company says, okay, I'm going to move to messaging. I'm going to have a dedicated mobile number for my customers to engage with my customer service agents. So they simply send an SMS saying, I need help with my widget. And it arrives at the customer service desk within a cloud-based platform. That customer service agent can come back and say, oh, okay, how can I help you with your widget? That, cust that customer can have that engagement at their convenience. And so the efficiency on the company side is that the company's customer service agent is not hijacked on that voice-to-voice -voice call. They can handle multiple messages at one time. Ultimately, it's a, a, a way that we get a, an immediacy. I find that now, I mean, let's, let's look at our world right now. I remember, because I'm old, older <laughs> i used to ring up a taxi mm. i used to ring up a taxi and they used to say okay first available well you don't know when that was going to happen mm. now good old uber comes along and we have a little app we just click the button and then we can see it's about one minute away two minutes away because we want everything immediate so when we call a place and it's interesting to have this conversation because a lot of our clients and a lot of people out there that we speak to um, they're looking for an immediacy and we want uh, the quicker we get hold of a person wanting a sale the the more the person is going to engage to want to buy because the longer you wait the competitor can pop in so i'm finding it's really important to be able to have the efficiency components ranked up but the cost of actually getting people on the phone, ringing up quickly or doing those dials is, is in, incred, incredibly prohibitive these days. A lot of people are downsizing and so forth and everybody has to, it needs to be automated. So when you look at the efficiencies, um, when you look at the cost of like between 60 cents uh, to a $4.80, I recall you said there was a, um, a customer you were talking to. Um the most important thing to understand about G's Plus is that it's multi-channel and multilingual. So we can provide customer service in 109 languages. So let me give you a typical example. Now, we did some mystery shopping recently with a large national insurance company. I'm not going to say who they are because they'd be terribly embarrassed at this 
scenario. So I had a colleague who only speaks Greek and he called their 1-800 number. First and foremost, they, they were presented with, oh, thank you for calling X, Y, Z, dial one for this, dial two for that, dial three for that, dial four for that. He didn't understand that. So most IVR customer service, after a period of time, if nobody presses any button, it will go to a live agent. And eventually it did go to that live agent. Now that live agent answered the telephone and my colleague spoke in Greek to that person. That person was flustered. They didn't know what to do. They fundamentally said, listen, I'm terribly sorry, but we do not have any translation services here and we don't speak Greek. And so I'm sorry and hung up on that person actually hung up on a potential sale. Now, if you take that scenario with that insurance company and you move it over to messaging and you move it over to the Jeeves Plus mobile concierge, you can have a situation where they can text to that number in Greek. It will come into our platform. It'll be automatically translated to English It'll then be presented to the live customer service agent through a cloud-based platform. They will see that message, plus they will see the Greek as well. They will then be able to respond accordingly to that message. That message response will then go through our system and be retranslated back and delivered to their mobile phone in Greek. The Greek person, when you see that engagement, where they are talking in language and they're getting customer service in language, they are, there is a sense of, uh, you know, they're elated. They, they, they have a really positive response with that company and that brand. So when we say here that, uh, so, so we're looking at getting more efficiency, reducing the cost, number one, which is, right. And everyone is going to, and you're correct, everyone just uses two or three platforms, not thousands of them. And they want to go back to, you know, the, the basics. Everyone uses SMS and that's still. So if we actually had a, your service, customer service using uh, G's plus the mobile concierge, a Greek person would send a message in Greek. The person receives it, it gets translated into English. They then do the response. He receives the response back in his own language, which means then there can be dialogue and engagement and you can either get a sale. I'm, I'm into the sale thing. It's qualified the person and, and then having a conversation where you're not saying, beg your pardon, uh, I can't understand their language. And, and it's, it's because we're a multicultural country. I mean, quite a significant amount of people here would love to speak in their own tongue and it's much more fluent and they can get their uh, message across. So you're saying that the, the G's plus will translate in how, how many different uh, languages? We do 109 languages, Dave. And, and, and look, there's another aspect to this as well. When you're dealing with text, text is data. Data can be interrogated and can be reviewed. We also in, in, uh, include a number of artificial intelligence in the conversation as well. So we can start to build a profile, but let's go back a second. If you have a situation where you have that consumer's mobile number and you know that they speak in Greek, we also have the ability to be able to broadcast in Greek as well. So over a period of time, a company can generate a database of their customers. Now you might have some in Greek, some in Arabic, some in Vietnamese, some in Hindi, etc., as well as people in English. We can then proactively send a special offer to those consumers in language. So consider yourself in, that, in, in our beautiful fruit salad of a country uh, called Australia with this beautiful multicultural society. And then we're now engaging with those people in language. So we send out a, to my Greek colleague an offer saying, look, we have an opportunity by which you can buy this new sofa. And you, if you respond within the next five minutes, we can, we can have it delivered to your home today at 25% off. Because they know that in the past conversation, they have in, indicated that they have a furniture problem. So that offer, could that offer be 
like let's say if you've segmented your database you have your chinese your indian your pakistani the arab arabic yeah. and it, you say oh, this is a offer we want to send this offer to our database but we don't want to send it in english we want to can can your system then say all right if they've been tagged accordingly would that be uh sent in their language correct oh, we would do that. a multilingual broadcast message of an offer and that's yeah you know, and that's quite unique in the marketplace now but i think that you know we had an experience quite some time ago steve where we saw in the hospitality sector a group of uh, chinese tra um, travelers who are engaging with the gs plus platform and the concierge of the hotel through our platform and they were elated and what we found is that when they engage with the with the hotel staff in their language they spend in the hotel they didn't have to go out to a chinese restaurant they had a beautiful steak dinner in the hotel so the hotel improved their Oh, that's a good word is ROI. That's what everyone... ROI, yes, yes. <laughs> a good old ROI. <laughs> us, te us technologists, you know, we, don't, we don't understand these, these sales <laughs> things, Steve. But we did some recent testing with the, uh, the Ethnic Community Council of New South Wales. We wanted to say to ourselves, okay, we have the platform to do customer service. We now have the translation engines to be able to provide that. But what we wanted to do is to make sure that our language was appropriate. Now, in our testing with ECC New South Wales, Ethnic Community Council of New South Wales, we learned what they commonly refer to as cultural intelligence. We learned that when you're dealing with an Arabic person, there's certain things that you have to be mindful of. When you're dealing with a Hindi person, there's certain things you have to be mindful of. Mm -hmm. So... We're now developing to address those idiosyncrasies with the multicultural marketplace. We're addressing and we're developing what we call cultural intelligence training. So those operators will have cultural intelligence training. So when they do speak with somebody in Arabic or Greek or whatever, they are sensitive to those, those elements. And and I think that's an important part. So we're now developing a new cost-effective, uh, efficient channel for customer service through messaging. And messaging is the SMS, Facebook Messenger. Google Business Messenger, which I want to highlight, Steve, is you, you have the ability to be able to engage with the customer at the search. So when people search for your business on Google, which is the world's great search engine, we can provide the ability for you can have a chat directly from search. Or when you want to find them on maps, we can have that conversation directly from maps. So SMS, Facebook Messenger, we all love Facebook Messenger. And then you've got Google Business Messenger and we've taken it one step further to take that chat. So when they're on the web, that little chat bubble comes on the bottom right-hand side of the screen of the business and they can have that chat. They can now have that chat in 109 languages. So let's take this, uh, this journey uh, uh, where the customer comes in, they use the channel of their preference. So talk to your customers on their device in their language is a bit of our tagline. So you have that wonderful experience where you're not only having a cost effect, a cost efficient customer service you're having cost effective customer service well let me just uh, ju jump in there you can actually have on your 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 listing a directive to say speak to us in your language this is this is god i've never seen this before guys listen to this so if you're one of your customers they can speak english but they would much prefer to speak in french and so forth because they're more fluent in that to speak to us in your language they will actually then have this conversation which means that you're going to get a a rich conversation not one that's with broken english and this becomes on the sales side of things uh, david uh, a lot of people say oh they couldn't understand english or they couldn't understand me they and the salesperson gets frustrated and the consumer would be frustrated and obviously they're not going to connect 
it with any type of rapport. So um, uh, this is gold because I'm finding a lot of people uh, are not responding to uh, telephone calls uh, or even voice uh, voicemail messages being left. Um, and they are significantly higher amounts of people are responding um, with SMS in particular. Now, if we put this into perspective, I in the sales arena and also in customer care, one of the big things is there needs to be, there's a contact log and everyone hates doing contact log. I mean, hello, got to type all the details in there or write it on the piece of paper. Then, you know, salespeople hate it and it's always done poorly. I'm assuming, and correct me if I'm wrong, that because there's been dialogue on text, all that's already done. Absolutely. And have a history of the conversation. So the sales manager could check it out and or the customer service manager can see it or you can refer back to the notes to make sure everything was right. Is that correct? Absolutely, Steve. And, and by having the history of the conversation, you can post analyze that conversation. You can pick up those little nuggets of gold. The operator can log those little nuggets of gold. We have an export facility within our platform that the uh, all of the data of the conversation can be exported and imported into you know, various CRMs. Now, the beauty about that is that the entire conversation is recorded. So there's no question about what has been said. He said, she said on those voice calls, when the traditional voice-to-voice -voice customer service, you've got to go back to the recordings and you've got to have some of it transcribed. That's inefficient. It's not elegant. Stuff. Oh, and it does, and no one does it, uh, David. Everyone says they're going to do it. It's always a good idea. Look, I was talking to a one of the, the owners of a company that we worked with the other day and we did a, a mini audit. And what we did was went into the contact logs to see what the compelling reasons were because their show rate was poor. Well, we had no data. And then we had a look at their sheets. They hadn't written it down. So it's all in the abyss. So then you have to ask the salesperson, what did you say? Now, this is great because this creates efficiency, but also accountability. Now, this is a big deal. Um, accountability and what's been said for customer care with sales or after sales service is something which is very difficult in most businesses to ascertain unless you're videoing it or listening to telephone calls. And to be quite frank, everyone says they'd like to do it, but they just don't do it. So the efficiencies are great. It's got it's multilingual. Yep. It allows for immediacy. I want to come back to one other thing, though, come back to the costs. Oh, yes. Yeah. One of the things that people want to do is reduce costs and inc increase profit uh, yep. and, and, and forget about uh, and get rid of the worry. Well, we've got to rid of most of those things. But I remember you telling me after you did an, ass uh, a, that's an appraisal of what needed to take place to having the people doing the translations. And I just getting correct if I'm wrong, I might get the numbers wrong. You said that the, the cost of using your platform for 12 months equated to just two months of what they were paying at their company at that point of time to do the translations and they weren't even being done properly. Is that right? Oh, look, Steve, this is, this is, this is something that absolutely shocked me. I was in a, um, a state government department recently and the uh, manager who was presented with the platform was quite frankly blown away. Um, she said to me, David, what does it cost for the, for the platform per month? And I said, it costs X. So she got her calculator out and she said, okay, Dave, you want, to, you, know, you want some good news? The cost of your platform for 12 months is the same cost I am paying for two months of live translators. That does not include the cost of my customer service agents or the technology or the voice call, et cetera. And the amount of money being spent on live translators is obscene. Now, look, I, look, I have got the greatest respect for live translators. They've got a real position in the marketplace. But then she went on to say, David, it's also very inefficient. So, when she was getting people who could not speak a particular language coming into their service center, they actually had to wait until they found a live translator in their language to be able to arrive at the location or at least get on the telephone. Now, in most cases, 
that's two to three hours. That's right. Well, this comes down to efficiency. Look, everyone wants things done quickly. They want to reduce their costs. They want to increase their profits. They want to give great customer care. How do you do it? Now, when you first told me about this, I was, I was like blown away. And when you went through the, and it's, guys, listen to what I'm saying. It's quite simple to set up. This oh yeah, setup is very very easy to do, and and you can instantly be live with, within a you know, very short period of time, which means that you've got the, all the platforms that people are using with SMS and messaging. Every one of them that's uh, you know everyone uses. Secondly, it becomes incredibly efficient, and if one one or two people are then using it, you've got immediacy, and especially in sales. I cannot stress this enough for everyone out there. The quicker you communicate with this person, and it's not just con putting a, a message out there, it's having that conversation. You can't sell anything unless there's a conversation. I just had a, a, a call with one of our clients. They were doing lots of SMSs and emails, but weren't getting anyone re re responding. And they were saying that was a contact. Well, that's not. It's a contact to book the appointment percentage or contact to sale, not attempted to contact. Now, because everyone wants things immediately, I think this uh, mobile concierge, the, the G's Plus, is actually coming to the rescue of all of it. Efficiency, reduced costs, better customer care, and multilingual. COVID has also been a friend of ours. Now, let's take a typical example. We've all gone to a, a coffee shop where we've had to scan the barcode, okay? And they say, okay, They've made a note that you're actually in that coffee shop on that date and time. Okay. We took that concept and said, okay, how can we make SMS or messaging simpler for the business? So we devised a QR code for each particular language. So by example, we've done a, uh, we're about to launch a new service for a, uh, for a big charity. That charity has an enormous um, a fruit salad of, of, of people they're dealing with. And what I mean by that, the multicultural society. So they said, how can we quickly and efficiently open up that conversation? So we said, okay, let's generate a QR code for each language. So we developed this technology by which they can scan the QR code. It will automatically open up their SMS messaging. It will pre-populate that message in language. So, and then all they have to do is send. So they don't have to type the mobile number. They don't have to write the message. So this particular charity said they were looking for, for, for help with people. So, People then can just quickly scan the barcode and that will then open the, the mobile telephone number. It will populate it in Hindi, Vietnamese, Arabic, Greek, Italian, Spanish, and of course, English. And they press the button. It comes into the platform. The charity can then say, oh, thank you for, for your, you know, your offer of help. And you'll be fantastic to help us in the Greek community. You'll be fantastic to help us in the Hindi community, etc. So what we have discovered that COVID by educating people on the use of barcodes, I'm sorry, QR codes, by apologies, it also has given us the new opportunity to have that first contact with the customer. So by example, you can have a customer that walks past the shop and you want this special offer and start talking to us about your needs in, in mobile or, or uh, furniture or white goods or whatever, they'd span, scan the barcode and, and they can do it in language. So that then opens up the opportunity for that business to start engaging with a multicultural society in language. Yes, look. Uh, in conversation. Uh, it allows people that are just English based in Australia, I mean, they can only speak English and they'll then hire someone in it to be their salesperson. Oh, he speaks Chinese or so forth. They bring them over. I remember many years ago, I was actually at um, a, a conference. We had a stand there. I approached this person and said, hello, I'm pretty good at building rapport. Um, he just said, hello, I'm just looking around, whatever. My colleague went over and said, hello, and he saw his name. He then asked him his name because it was actually uh, from, from another a country. 
they instantly started communicating in their language. They sat down and they had a good conversation. And I'm not exaggerating here. At $17,000 later, um, they were really happy clients and everything happened. Now, it was because the person was able to have that conversation in language. So you're absolutely spot on. This is going to open up a, a whole new world of, of customer service, but also sales and conversions, which can be done via SMS and also at least getting the initial dialogue happening. And I think it's very exciting that, uh, you know, it's now even, you can even get all the information on a QR code, which, well, look, they've been around for years, but no one ever used them. And, and now they're, they're common practice. Mm. Look, um, we could talk for hours on this, but the mobile concierge, the G's Plus, I think it's, it's fantastic. I'm sure lots of people that have been listening today can see, well, there's lots of applications that we could uh, like to use. Now, it isn't expensive. I know that. And I know it's very easy to set up. So how can people uh, get hold of you, David? What's the best way? Oh, look, Steve, very simply, just send me an email to david at jeeves.plus or just simply call me. Um, I'll happily give them my mobile number, which is 0419-371-555. Now, um, hang on a tick. Everyone's dashing for their pen right now. So uh, <laughs> hang on a tick. They get there. Just get let them get the pen. And then, now they got it. Yes. Email slowly. What is it? David at jeeves.plus. That's J E E V E S dot plus. And the mobile number is there, a, a dot plus. Is there, there's no dot, dot? No, no, it replaces the dot com, Steve. Isn't that great? So it's yeah. uh, David at G's dot plus. Perfect. And the mobile, nice and slowly 0419 371 555. Great. Well, wow. I'm very excited. We're going to be talking about uh, uh, having David help us with some of our stuff. And um, David, uh, congratulations on your innovation and putting this together. As I said, no wonder so many people are knocking down your door. So um, uh, love hearing about technology and making life easier for everybody and uh, customer care, sales in inquiries, and also aftercare service. Uh, I think it just makes, it just simplifies it using what everyone else is using without having to teach them how to use something else. So thanks. Now, Steve, I want to close this out with one thing. One, one thing. If there's any clients of Impact Training that want to give Jeeves a try with their customer service, we will give them a 25% discount oh, on the setup and running for the first 12 months. Oh, well, we want to make that offer to the Impact Training clients because we, we, we believe that, uh, you know, Great customer service, and and Steve, you've been fantastic in in supporting Jeeves, and we'd like to make that offer to your customers. Well, that's a, a real that's a big surprise, guys. So thanks, David. That's uh that's uh you're full of surprises, but thank you. It's very generous of you. That's awesome. Thank you very much. Pleasure, mate. Pleasure. Well, guys, how good is that technology at your fingertips? Now, Jeeves, J E E V E S dot plus. Um, now, let me tell you, if we can get your customer care and you'll get your inquiries faster and we can get better uh, communication, it's a no-brainer. So reach out to David, have a chin wag, show you the platform. It's really exciting when he shows you as, a, let's say, a practical component because it's really cool. Um, and uh, have a look because I think in this day and age, there's so much technology and I, I get a little bit overwhelmed with it all, but this is quite simply easy to do reduces your costs, increases efficiency, and you'll see more people. So you'll make more sales. So again, David, thanks for joining me today. And uh, I hopefully lots of people give you a buzz and I'll, uh, I'll be talking to you real soon. So it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, gang. Another great interview. Wasn't he awesome? So strongly recommend that you look at technology because at the end of the day, um, I'm not an expert. You're not an expert in it. Get the people that know what they're doing, which allows you to then have the freedom to do the stuff that is your genius. Take some action, and I'll see you when you're a little bit older. Bye for now.